welcome to episode 29 of our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. As we've mentioned every week during this series, there are thousands of surnames in these regions. To make our task more manageable, we're focusing on pre-Civil War surnames. That's because the Industrial Revolution of the late 1800s scattered thousands more surnames across the Fruited Plains. And some of them, no doubt, made their way into major cities in the South and certain coal mining areas in central Appalachia. Each of the family names that we'll examine today, as always, was requested by members of our YouTube community. You might note that I discuss surnames in the order that I received them, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve as a resource for you. I also appreciate your patience as I make my way through the hundreds of names still on our list, and they keep coming in, which I'm grateful for. By request, I'm posting an email address to the vantage point in the description so you can request a surname catalog. It contains all the surnames that we've covered up through this week. So, today on the vantage point, we'll be talking about the origins and meanings of eight common and not so common Appalachian and Southern surnames. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Number one, Hodgkinson. When I received the request for Hodgkinson and Hodges, I got excited. My double great-grandmother on my dad's maternal side was a Hodge from Sevier County in East Tennessee. Hodgkinson has the same roots as Hodge or Hodges. In its earliest form, it grew out of the baptismal name for Roger. Initially, Hodge was a common rural surname in the border region of England and Scotland. When a Hodge couple had a son, they added an S to his last name to become Hodges. However, with the continued influence of the French-speaking Normans in Great Britain, who introduced Roger in the first place, the name for a small man named Hodges morphed into Hodgkinson. It literally means Little Hodges' Son. Records for Hodge and Hodges people are found in Scotland from at least the 15th century. At that time, Scottish folk with that name were found from Glasgow to Edinburgh all across the country, as well as scattered throughout the lowlands and border country. In Ireland, Hodges is often found as Hodge Inns, but no form of the surname is found among the common Welsh families. At the end of the day, I think we can call Hodgkinson an English surname, but Hodges could be English or Scottish. Hodgins is most likely an Irish expression of the surname. Number two, Brazil. I'm not going to lie to you about Brazil. When I first received the request, I thought, I'll give it a shot. But I was doubtful that I would find that much information about it. That's because Appalachia is a long way from the migration route followed by Portuguese settlers who moved to South America to form the country of Brazil. After all, Portuguese is the language of Brazil and it's had little effect on the culture of the American South. Are you ready for a shocker? The original form of the surname Brazil was O, and it was in Ireland, especially County Waterford. It's also found or spelled. McClassic believes its original meaning had to do with strife. I think we in Appalachia in the South could call or should call Brazil an Irish surname. Number three, Newsom. Everything that I've read about Newsom, which has various spellings like Newsham, is that it's an old English toponymic for dweller at the new houses. Now I'd like to think that those old timers lived in at least one of those houses and not some decrepit shack or lean-to in the woods next to the ancient housing development. How about that for some kind of Polaroid image? Ooh. Newsom does not appear to be among the common Welsh and Scottish surnames. It's found in Ireland where it's most often spelled without the E on the end. In Appalachia in the south, I think we can call Newsom an English surname. If it doesn't have an E on the end of it, it may have come from Ireland. Only a paper trail can tell you for sure. Number four, wood or woods. Whereas Newsom was derived from people who lived in or near new houses in the ancient days, wood is about dwelling in the woods or forests. However, they could have lived in a new house in the old woods. Uh, when we add an S to wood, it signifies a son of a person named Wood. Woods. It could also have applied to a cluster of people named Wood. I could just imagine someone traipsing through the forest whereupon he comes across a fellow with a scruffy beard named Reginald Wood. After a brief, con brief conversation, the traveler then asks Reginald if he's one of the Woods folks that lives in that area. Well, in that instance, Woods was simply a plural form of Wood. 
Robert Bell tells us that Wood is among the 15 most common surnames in England and Wales. But Woods is not common in England, Scotland, or Wales. That's with the S. It's 10 times more common in Ireland with the S than without it. In fact, several Irish surnames adopted Woods, especially in Ulster. Only one of the Irish names contained elements of the Gaelic word for Wood, though. That name is Mackinhill. While I'm speaking of uh, generalities here, I think we could assume that a person named Wood has ancestors from England, Scotland, or Wales. A person named Woods could well be of Irish descent. I think that one would be well served with a paper trail to see from whence your line originated. Number five, Elkins. When I was a student at the University of Arkansas, Go Pig, Suey Pig, and all that school spirit stuff. I lived just outside of Fayetteville on the back road to Elkins, Arkansas. I often took the pig trail so I could pass through Elkins on my way home to Tennessee. The lay of the land and the culture looked like parts of Upper East Tennessee. It looked like home to me. It wasn't hard to find gravy and biscuits and cornbread and buttermilk in the Ozarks either. I can tell you that for sure. Folks, if you haven't traveled to the Ozarks of Arkansas, you need to see them. Now, while a lot of people venture to Branson, Missouri for a taste of the musical Americana, which is located in the Missouri Ozarks, travel another 52 miles to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and you will be treated to one of the most interesting towns in the American South. At any rate, Elkins is an English surname derived from a diminutive for Ellie, Elkins, or Elkin. Ellie is short for Ellen. When we add the S, we have the son of Elkin. It also shows up in the 13th century census as Elkin. The surname Elkins is not common anywhere except England, so I think we in the South should think of Elkins as an English surname. Number six, Lunsford. This surname is an English toponymic or habitational name. It most likely came from Sussex and is connected to a place called Lunsford Cross. A look around the aisle suggests that it's not common or found among the common surnames in Ireland, Scotland, or Wales. A search of the internet revealed several conflicting details about Lunsford. The Ford suffix, however, tells me for certain that it is indeed an English name for one who lived near a river crossing. But beyond that, there isn't much else that I can find on it. I think we here in the South can say that Lunsford is an English surname from the South of England. Number seven, De Hart. At first glance, De Hart looks like a French surname, so I immediately thought that it was a Norman surname or a Huguenot surname. But it doesn't appear in any of my surname books for the countries located in the Isles, like the Isle of Man, Great Britain, and Ireland. Online sources suggested a Flemish origin. There's a blending of German and French names in that area. Da, of course, means of or from. The German scholar Hans Below believes that a heart could identify a cow herd. I would call it a herd of cows, but anyway. Another online source claims that the name hails from Bavaria, but I'm not convinced that Bavaria is a good candidate for a place of origin for the heart. I think that because Bavaria is close to Austria, Liechtenstein, and Switzerland. Versions of German are spoken in those places, so I think that Flanders and its proximity to France is more likely of a place of origin for the heart. Number eight, Varney or Verney. Situated 270 miles southeast of Paris, France, and nestled in the French Italian Alps is a region called Le Vernay. There is also a Lac de Vernay, an alpine lake. This is one of the few French names or surnames in Appalachia in the South that did not originate with the Normans and who came from the northwest of France. In surveying Great Britain and Ireland, I found that it's only common in England. It makes sense to me that we think of Varney as either an English or French surname. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful out of our discussion. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I invite you to check out all the videos on the Vantage Point. In addition to the surnames of Appalachia and the South series, they cover a wide range of topics including the history of climate change and natural disasters. I hope you'll check them out. If demand warrants, I'll be back soon with another episode on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. I hope to see you then. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.